Hello everyone. Good day sa ating lahat. Welcome to um, SS031. Again, welcome to SS031. This is Understanding the Self. We are uh, now on our second lecture. Still, this is SS031. And today, our discussion will be concentrating on the self as a social construct. Again, our discussion for today, we'll concentrate on the self as a social construct. Again, this is Sir E, your professor, instructor, facilitator para po sa ating klase sa SS031. Magandang araw po. And we will now begin with our lecture. As we proceed with our lecture, umpisahan po natin uh, sa ating pangunawa sa ating mga course outcomes. Okay, so in this lesson, the students, unang una, number one, uh, number one, in this lesson, the students must be able to articulate what culture means to the self as part of the society. Titingnan ho natin kung ano ba, ano ho ba ang kahalagahan ng ating kultura sa ating pagiging bahagi ng ating lipunan. Another one, we will try to analyze the anthropological and sociological constructs of the Self. Now, well, I was when I was writing this part of the book, um, pinagsama ko po itong anthropology and sociology because we have to understand that these two disciplines in the social sciences are very much intertwined, and they will give us uh, an an a, an even more uh, succinct and uh, clear idea of how culture somehow influences us, okay, sa ating isip, sa ating uh, pagkatao. Number three, hopefully the students must be able to attribute self-understanding, okay, self-understanding and behavior to cultural factors. Number four, we'll try to recognize and appreciate differences in cultural behaviors of the self, particularly from the Western and Asian context. So along our discussion today, we will try to uh, compare and contrast how the self is being understood from the Western and Oriental perspectives. And lastly, we will try to explain how the modern world where you all lived live in right now has changed our view of the self. Again, welcome to S031. This is our second lecture. Our discussion will concentrate on the self as a social Construct. Now, Clifford Geertz, a very famous sociologist, said that culture is not just an ornament of human existence. Again, let me repeat that. Clifford Geertz said that culture is not just an ornament of human existence, but the principal basis of its specificity or an essential condition for it. Ang sinasabi po ni Clifford Geertz dito, hindi po palamote ang kultura sa ating buhay. In fact, when we talk about culture, it's not an ornament but a principal basis, pangunahing dahilan, okay? An essential condition sa ating buhay. Now, uh, hopefully we will be able to understood the understand this quote better as we uh, go along with our discussion today. Now, we have to understand that knowing the self requires understanding our society, okay, and its culture and how it provokes us to make decisions which are culturally influenced and um, socially constructed. Um, when we speak of culture, we have to understand that it's very much influential in understanding who we are because the decisions that we make okay are very much socially constructed because we are culturally influenced sa ating mga ginagawang decision it is quite impossible to ultimately know the self without comprehending the culture of our society now the self us, okay, as a social being is influenced by our culture. As products of the culture itself, we mirror, sinasalamin natin yung values, traditions, and the beliefs that our society hold 
deer. Now, these concepts are embedded in the culture of people. When we speak of the values, the traditions and beliefs, these are all embedded in the culture of the people. At ang impact ng kulturang ito permeates in the very soul of the social self. No unang discussion natin, it's all about the philosophical self. And so today, we will be proceeding with our understanding of the social self or the self as a social construct. When we say the self as a social construct, ang pangunawa natin sa sarili natin ay na, nangyayari, okay? ay nanggagaling doon sa kung ano ang sinasabi ng kultura kung sino po tayo. Now, culture is one big chunk in helping analyze our self-understanding. Okay, again, it is quite impossible to ultimately know the self without comprehending the culture of our society. Now, the Philippines, our country, is very much uh, ripe with a lot of examples of how culture influences our worldviews and our decisions. In your screen right now, you will see, um, I'm not sure if you have watch this movie okay before the title of the movie is dead nasilolo there is i believe uh, a full uh copy of this movie on youtube so you might want to check out this is dead nasilolo okay so this movie um depicts how a grieving family is faced with the many superstitious beliefs and traditions and their influences in the family's decision as they prepare for the interment of their dead loved one. Okay, now we have to understand that we mga Pilipino, we are very much superstitious, superstitious. Okay, so we got a lot of traditions, we got a lot of superstitions. Kapag mayroong mga uh, Ganitong usapin, say for example, when we talk about doon sa week ng mga namatay, ang dami natin yan, di ba? Yung bawal magsuot ng pula, um, hindi ka pwedeng ihatid ng uh, pamilyang namatayan. Kapag ikaw uwi, dapat marunong kang magpagpag. So, our country is very much replete with a lot of examples, okay? Of prestigious beliefs and the traditions that influence our decision making. So, whenever we make decisions, whenever we try to make decisions, these are very much influenced, okay, nung ating kultura. In fact, it's not just our decision, but our understanding of who we are that is very much socially constructed. Now, Edward Tyler, Sir Edward Tyler, the uh, considered the father of cultural anthropology, okay, um, he classically defined culture as that complex whole, okay? It is a complex whole which includes knowledge, uh, beliefs, arts, morals, law, customs, and any other capabilities acquired by man, by a human as a member of society. What makes culture complex is the fact that when we speak of culture, it does not only point out to one aspect of our society, but it's just like a web okay of concepts where we include the knowledge the beliefs the arts the morals even yung law yung customs ng mga tao and you bring these all together and with that we are able to understand what culture is all about Diyan po sa my screen natin makikita ninyo the the different aspects of culture the different facets of culture you talk about um, attitudes, you talk about beliefs, even language, which is considered as the cornerstone of culture by which it is possible to pass on yung mga traditions, yung mga laws, yung mga customs, yung mga beliefs natin. And even you talk about customs, rituals, behavior, even our faith, yung ating pananampalataya, okay, is a part of religion, even the food that we eat, okay, even the arts, the drama, the music that we patronize, these are all included in what we know as our culture, okay? So, ayan po yung pinag-uusapan natin, yung uh, kultura, okay? Now, katulad po ng sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, while I was writing this part of the book, I... 
somehow no i i intertwine these two i it's not really i intertwine but pinagsama ko po siya okay uh, the disciplines of sociology and anthropology because even though they are considered as two distinct disciplines okay i'm referring to sociology and anthropology they are very much related uh, and intertwined now when we speak of anthropology it is inclusive it is the inclusive study of what it is the inclusive study of human race its culture and society and its physical development so whatever you see in, on your screen right now it's it's uh, it actually vividly depicts the idea of what anthropology is all about it deals with what the origin of humanity yung pinagmulan ng uh, ng tao okay it deals with the origin of humanity and it also shares in the discussion of what human society is Okay? At papaano ba nag-develop ang kultura ng mga tao? We have to understand that this discipline is very important because the physical development of man is very much significant in our understanding okay, of humanity and in our own self-understanding. As we grow up, habang tayo dumalaki, we try to adjust and our culture to where it could be beneficial to us we try to fine-tune our culture we try to modify our culture to cater to what we need and what we want as that has been the case historically it is very much evident it is very much apparent that cultural progress is understood from humanity's physical development. Kaya nga po, ito'y very important na pag-aralan natin in understanding how the self is uh, socially constructed. It is actually right to say that man created culture on his own. Ang pinanggalingan ng kultura ay ang mga tao mismo. We are culture creators. We alter culture and will always have the power to change culture as we see fit. Now, anthropology understands culture, okay, as the dynamic and evolving socially constructed reality, nagbabago, okay, na realidad, okay, that exists among the members of the social group. Now, culture is very much dynamic that's one of the characteristic of culture meaning nagbabago siya kung paano itong gustong gawin or palitan baguhin i-alter ng mga tao another discipline which is very much important in our understanding of the self as being socially constructed okay ay yung disiplina ng sociology now sociology is defined as the scientific study of human life, social groups, whole societies, na ang subject matter, ang pinag-aaralan dito, is the behavior of social beings in relationship with many other people. Okay? So, wag tayong malilito ha. When we talk about sociology, it's all about the behavior okay, of social beings in relation with many other people. Say, Bakit ako ganito magsalita? Perhaps this was influenced by certain factors in my environment. Okay, so ayun po yung naka-influence sa akin. Now, we have to understand people that when we speak of culture, it is the meeting point. Okay, let me um let me um highlight that one. Okay? When we talk about culture, it is considered as the meeting point between anthropology and sociology okay yun po yung pinaka importante na maintindihan natin dito okay it is the meeting point of anthropology and sociology in our self understanding because okay it digs deep into how we see ourselves in light of the diverse cultural influences Okay, that we have been exposed to since we were children, even until now, hanggang sa tumanda pa tayo. Now, the complexity of culture is seen in the 
many aspects that is inclusive in it. Because again, almost everything that we see, okay, that we hold dear is part of our culture. In fact, culture was introduced to us the moment that we were born. And then through the society that we belong to as we grow up, habang tayo po ay lumalaki, okay, we were familiarized with the uh, with the do's and don'ts, okay, with the ought and ought not ng maliit na ng ating maliit na mundo pa nun. because our world when we were born, umiikot lang sa sa ating mga Familia. But as we get older and as we discover much of the world around us, we realize the complexities of culture, okay? Because our decision should mirror the very foundations of our culture. We are introduced to the loss of the land. We are introduced to the loss of the school. So nagiging komplikado na. Dati, ang sabi lang, matulog ka ng ganitong oras, okay, kumain ka ng ganito. Pag tayo lumaki na, ini-introduce tayo sa bigger uh, world natin. And we've seen the influence of culture in, the, in how we should be acting right. Okay, and how we know acting wrong is in our uh, society. Okay, now with these definitions that we see, okay, how then are the disciplines of sociology and anthropology helpful in our self understanding? Papano po ito nakakatulong sa ating pangunawa sa ating mga sarili? Okay. Paano ba nakakatulong itong dalawang disciplines na ito for us to understand better, okay, kung sino po tayo. Okay, now, the very foundation then, okay, the very foundation then of the self, okay, in anthropology is understanding man in light of its cultural context. Okay, inuunawa natin ang tao in light of the culture na pinanggagalingan niya while, okay, pag pinag-usapan naman po natin ang um, sociology, okay, pag pinag-usapan naman natin ang sociology, it digs into understanding the self in reference to the behavior of the society. Okay, yung behavior natin, kaya ako ganito kasi yung paligid ko ay ganito. Okay, yun po yung inuunawa ng sociology. Now, um, our culture, okay, sets the norms of our people. And when we talk about the norms, these are the socially prescribed actions of the society. That is where we get the word normal. Okay, so kapag ikaw ay, if you are following the norms or the prescribed rules of the society, then you are considered as normal. But kapag hindi ka naman sumusunod sa mga prescribed rules ng ating lipunan, you are considered as what? Okay, you are considered as deviant because you defy the norms of the society. We don't say abnormal. Okay? Hindi po kasi the, the term abnormal is uh, used in psychology. Okay? Hindi po sa my sociology. So when you are deviant, you try to defy the prescribed rules in the society. Say for example, may mga estudyante na kahit alam nilang you are required to wear uniform in school. Alimbawa, no, senior high school kayo, may mga matatapang pa rin mga estudyante na papasok sa school nang hindi naka-uniform. So they're trying to defy the norms, okay, of the society. Is defying the norms wrong? Hindi naman sa lahat ng pagkakataon, particularly if you are pointing to a higher cause. Say for example, the 1986 People Power Revolution, okay? That's actually defying the rules of the the the, the law of the land. But then again, since it's pointing to a higher cause, then it's justifiable. Okay, so again, um, that's it. Okay, so as a sociological concept, culture is made up of all the ideas, yung paniniwala, yung behavior, um, and products, even yung mga produkto, okay, that defines the, uh, the life of the people in the society. And then we will now be proceeding with the components of culture. Now, there are two components of culture. Okay, so how do we try to define material culture and non-material 
culture. Okay, now the material culture and the non-material culture are very much important in our understanding of how the self is actually influenced, okay, by these two components of culture, okay? So when we talk about material culture, these are consisting of human technology. So all the things that people make and use, even the laptops that we are using at the moment, Okay, even yung mga pens, lahat halos ng nakikita natin sa paligid natin. These are considered as part of our material culture. I think um, hindi na masyadong kailangang i-elaborate pa. Okay, when we talk about material culture. Anyway, but the other component of culture is what we call as the non-material culture. And when we say uh, non-material culture, these are includes, inclusive of the intangible. Ibig sabihin, hindi nahahawakan. Okay, intangible human creations that include beliefs, values, norms, and symbols. Okay, so when we talk about the non-material culture of people, Okay, so these are the intangible expressions of the culture. So we talk about, say, for example, yung ating uh, faith. Okay, that's actually a non-material culture because you can't actually hold faith. Okay, but then again, um, you have to understand, okay, that it is actually possible for non-material culture manifest in the material culture of people. As I said a while ago, when you speak of faith, yung ating pananampalataya, this is what? Okay, this is a non-material culture. But then again, our faith being a non-material culture could actually manifest in the material world. That's the reason why meron tayong tinatawag na mga buildings, may mga Bibles, and whatnot. Uh, another example of which is this. Say, for example, you grew up in a very conservative society. Conservatism is a non-material culture. But as expressed in the material world, okay, makikita natin na noong unang panahon, dahil konservatibo pa ang mga, ang mga tao, say, for example, during the Spanish period in the Philippines, ang mga babae ay hindi pwedeng mag ng napakaiksing mga shorts. Right? So that is when you see, that is where you see how the material culture of uh, the non-material culture people of humanity is actually expressed in the material world. Okay? Um, again, it's very dynamic. May intindihan po natin yan. Now, the evolution of material culture can be attributed to the technological advances. Okay? It can be attributed to the technological advances of humanity okay as such material culture has drastically changed okay it has drastically changed particularly in the globalized world cultural exchanges also paved the way for the alteration of material culture dahil nga uh because by virtue of globalization, as described as the world without borders, we are able to exchange cultures, okay, with other countries, okay? So, nagkakaroon ng alteration, modification of our culture. See, take for example, the case of mobile phones, as you see on your screen right now. Now, mobile phones has changed a lot since it was introduced to humanity from just being a simple handy calling device it became much more complex commodity that has changed the landscape of human communication now this is an example of how powerful material culture can be okay so dyan natin makikita kung gaano uh, ka powerful yung material culture na tinatawag natin. I remember the first time that I had my phone was when I was in my uh, first year in college at yung phone ko ay ibinigay lamang sa akin ng aking classmate para daw madali niya akong makontak para in case na magtatanong siya about sa homework, meron siya. Ako naman si Go ako. So tuwang-tuwa ako no. Naaalala ko medyo malaki yung phone na ibinigay niya noon sa akin. Okay, let me see on screen here. Mga ganito ang itsura ng phone na yon. Okay? Ito. <laughs> yung kapag sasakay ako sa MRT, I remember, nilalakasan ko yung volume noon para tas titingnan mo. Yan, di ba? Parang proud na proud ka. Laki ng cellphone mo. <laughs> okay? So that was my uh, first uh, cellphone noon. So again, 
the evolution of mobile phones is actually a testament of how powerful material cultures can be okay now non-material culture again is the inclusive okay uh, um expression of the intangible human creations of man now what we have to understand it that is that it is very important for us to know that non-material culture katulad po ng sinabi ko kanina could actually manifest in the material culture of people as i said a while ago say conservatism as a social value can manifest in the kind of dress that people wear on the other hand a very exclusive group would not want to accept any material object from their outside world take for example the case of north korea since they are considered as a hermit kingdom okay they do not want to accept everything that is of america in the world because they believe that it is evil okay so ayun po yung importante na makita natin dito okay now although material culture changes over time non-material culture may or may not change okay depending on the influence of outside factors in the society and the changes that societal values go through okay so kapag nakita nyo po halimbawa yung picture ng dalawang babae so you will see that they are coming from two different worlds but they are from the same world okay so makikita nyo rito yung uh the girl here okay while looking at the girl on the, on your right sabi niya that dress is very much provocative okay but then again itong babae naman na nasa right natin when she looks at the girl on the at the woman on the left ang sa isipin niya isn't that too much clothing must be uncomfortable so you see your culture very much affects how you see the world how your perception is of the world okay and even the perception of yourself okay is very much um influenced okay ng ating kultura now on december 7 okay sorry december 6 of 2017 okay the australian parliament finally passed the law of legalizing same-sex marriage in the land down under now during that time the prime minister was still uh malcolm turnbull and he was quoted as saying this is australia fair diverse loving and filled with respect for everyone so doon po makikita natin somehow kung papaano nagbabago yun pong uh, social values ng mga tao because before in a very conservative world when we talk about homosexuality or say we talk about same-sex marriage it is a no-no but since people have embraced the concept of liberalism and when you talk about the concept of liberalism it is the concept of embracing uh, freedom of expression okay so kung ano yung gusto mong gawin gawin mo okay so that's all about freedom of, of expressing oneself okay it's embracing freedom that's all about um liberalism okay and respecting people for whatever they are for whoever they want to be okay now this is a case okay um actually this was more than a year after the united states favored a nationwide legalization of same-sex marriage i'm not uh, sure if medyo naaalala nyo pa uh yung uh may hashtag na nauso noon diba yung ano ba yung nakalimutan ko yung hashtag na yun okay so basta nung time na yun sa may america na ako noong legalize na across the board sa america yung uh same-sex marriage Okay, uh, nung time po na yan. Now, at a moment, uh, same-sex marriage is seen as lawful in some, in some portions of the world. Okay, so let's look at the next slide on screen. Okay, it is seen as legal in some portions of the world while, okay, it is being debated in many other countries still. It is perceived to be fought hard by those who abhor discrimination and those who uphold and champion equality okay so if you are going to uh yan naalala ko na yung hashtag na yon sa may america yung uh, nagtrend sa twitter ni yung hashtag love wins 
okay, during that time. Now, if you're going to look on your screen right now, this was a Pew Research Center. This was 2017, and it's like three years ago. Okay, these are the countries that allow gay marriage or where it is legal in some jurisdictions. Ano yung makikita natin dito? Mapapansin natin. Most of the countries that legalized already same-sex marriage are those coming from the West. Okay? So pag mapapansin natin, para lang po hindi tayo malito doon sa partition ng East and the West. Okay? So dito po yung partition ng East and West sa atin. Okay, so this is the Western world. They have so embraced the concept of liberalism, of equality, of freedom of expression, of non-discrimination. Okay, sir, bak po yung Australia, okay, ay kasama dito, samantalang mas malapit siya doon po sa mga Asian countries. Now, you have to understand that the Australians, okay, nakilala natin, they they are actually ano lang sila dito okay sinakop nila yung lugar na ito from the aborigines okay but their worldview their perspective is very much western okay so ito po yung makikita natin no and most countries in the orient or in the east okay are not legalizing same sex marriage yet if it is going to happen in the Philippines, I'm not sure about that. I don't think it's going to happen in five or ten years' time. You have to understand that our country is very much conservative and you have the church, which is a very huge voice, okay, in social matters, okay, sa bansa po natin, okay? Um, it is yet to be seen in our country whether this change of heart will take place anytime soon because again, Filipinos are very much religious. So it would take a long time if that same law would be passed at all. Now it is just significant how history can change as our non-material culture is modified if not altered. Okay, values are modified, norms are changed depending on what the society wishes to accomplish at a particular time. So, yan po yung isang bagay na kailangan nating maintindihan. Okay, in this day and age, equality, freedom from discrimination are seen as human values that are ought to be accorded to everyone regardless of their gender identity and preferences it is good to underscore however in our concept the reason why we're studying this okay how changes in the values in the non-material culture of people affects our self-perception which is definitely a product of the changing worldviews and perspectives of our society okay the self then is clearly linked to his or her culture we can never underestimate and we can never understand people apart from it since it is the very personality of our society consequently the self mirrors this personality of culture in fact our social personality is a reflection of culture itself okay now an interesting link okay between the behavior of man was and the emergence of the self as part of the society was studied by george herbert mead he expounded that an individual explains his actions through the lens of his society. Ibig sabihin, ipinapaliwanag ng uh, mga tao. Okay? Ang individual daw ay mauunawaan kapag naunawaan natin. Okay? Ang ating lipunan since an individual belongs to a social structure, a social order. According to me, the individual sees himself as the focus of everything until such time that the self emerges because of the influence of 
those who play a very significant role in their self-development. Doon sa sinasabi niya rito, when the individual sees himself as the focus of everything, ito po ay nangyayari pagka panganak natin. Diba? Kapag merong baby sa bahay, parang siya yung pride and joy of the family. So, parang tuwang-tuwa sa kanya, nakafocus sa kanya ang lahat ng tao. Until such time, okay, na medyo we can already spread our wings. We are introduced to the bigger world out there and we are able to understand the world and we are able to to separate ourselves from the world <coughs> excuse me because mas nakikilala na natin yung ating mga sarili and that is the point that we are able to develop who we are now according to me the, according to me the emergence of the self okay the emergence of the self <coughs> becomes evident as the individual goes through okay through preparatory play and game stages so there are three you have the preparatory stage you have the play stage and the game stage now mead explains doon sa my game stage of the development stages of the self okay so makikita natin doon according to uh, according to mead Okay, the individual considers a group of people before he acts. Okay, before he acts, okay, invoking yung rules of the games he's playing. Okay, so tingnan ho natin itong uh, sa screen natin yung needs development stages of the self. Now, the self is able to simultaneously take on the role first of no one. Okay. Because he has no, uh, no ability to take, to take the role of another because he always engages in imitation. Yung mga bata pa tayo, di ba? Ginagaya natin yung mga magulang natin, tinuturuan tayo na kumain, gamitin ng kutsara to the door, mag-toothbrush, toilet training, and whatnot. So everything is imitation noong mga bata pa tayo. But then, habang tayo lumalaki na, Okay, so we try to engage in play, di ba? Kapag may mga kalaro, nakakipaglaro ka na. So um, this is the moment. Okay, na kahit papaano, nakikita na natin yung kaibahan natin sa iba. Okay, engaging in play, dadalhin ka sa kapitbahay mo, makikipaglaro ka sa mga kapwa mo bata sa bahay, so engaging in play. Okay, medyo lumalaki na okay, yung ating community. And then, engaging in games, nung mga elementary tayo. Okay, naglalaro na tayo, naalala ko yung mga karaniwang laro ko noon, mga touching rubber and whatnot. Okay, mahilig ako sa tagutaguan kaya ang nognog ko nung bata ako. <laughs> Grabe. Okay, hindi ako uwi hanggang hindi nagdidilim. Okay, so when we are engaging in games, we are able to see uh, other people around us. And with this, we are able to recognize the generalized other. We are able to separate ourselves from the crowd. Okay, this is the last stage, the result of which is the self being able to identify other group members that have expectations on how you should act and behave in different situations. In that stage, he is able again to recognize you own generalized other. Those individuals who are most important in the development of the self. Hence, the focus of our action has now shifted from what? From the self. Okay, kasi hindi na tayo yung focus ng lahat eh. Okay, from the self, okay, to what? Okay, to the generalized other, the prominent people around us, the significant people surrounding us. Because now, we see ourselves as, as members of the group where our actions and decisions, we have to carefully analyze them because it has to mirror the goals, the values, and the beliefs of our society okay however okay now you have to understand first that need explains that at the very heart okay of this social psychology is yung epekto okay noong mga social groups sa pag-unawa natin sa ating mga sarili say for example Okay, the subjective action and experience of man is explained from the society's point of view where the self becomes even more sensitive doon sa mga values which should, he should be adhering to as part of the bigger group of the society. Say, our social value dictates that a gentleman should be courting a girl sa bahay. Okay, so kapag hindi mo ginawa yon, 
it's as if you are defying the norms of the society. Pero hindi mo gagawin yon kasi alam mong yon ay mali. Although may mga gumagawa nun. Halimbawa kayo, sino sa inyo ang nanligaw ng hindi nagpapaalam sa magulang ng babae? Diba? So, you know, well, at least in the present time, I'm not sure how you look at it. Diba? Parang iba na yung takbo ng pumamaraan ng courtship. Um, anyway, however, um, Clifford Geertz has a very interesting concept of the self because um, he said that the self is actually an unfinished animal. He explained that culture should not be seen as a complex behavioral pattern. Okay, but it is actually and should be considered as a control mechanism. Okay, yung kultura is actually a control mechanism. Somehow, I, I tend to agree with Clifford Geertz that our culture is a control mechanism because these are programs to direct human behavior. Because again, when we were born, we do not actually know what is right and what is wrong. It's only when those people around us introduce to us, okay, <coughs> yung konsepto ng tama at mali, na mauunawaan natin kung ano ang tama at mali. So, the, our culture is actually controlling us, okay, na gawin kung ano yung tama at wag gawin kung ano yung hindi. Now, why is Clifford Geertz saying that man should be considered, uh, man is an unfinished animal? Bakit niya po sinasabi niya? He actually described man as an unfinished animal because man is always dependent on structures to control his behavior. Okay, halimbawa, ang isang bata, kapag hindi mo yan pinitigil sa paglalaro, hindi yan titigil. So, what some parents do is that they create schedule sa mga bata. Okay, para makontrol yung oras nila ng paglalaro, yung oras ng pag-aaral, yung oras ng pagtulog, and all that. So, bata pa lang, we are being um, made aware okay, of these control mechanisms slash culture. Okay, kung paano dapat tayo mabuhay at kumilos sa ating lipuna. Now, man as an unfinished animal, okay, is always, again, dependent on structures to control our behavior. Ayun po yung according kay Clifford Geertz. Now, the anthropological conception of this, okay, is highlighted doon sa age-old assumption that man's unrestricted general responses should be regulated kailangan i-regulate yung kilos ng tao. Do you agree? I hope so. Okay? Because, again, even though we are free to do our actions, there is no such thing as absolute freedom. Never. Okay? Na nagkaroon ng konsepto ng absolute freedom ang tao. Okay? So, there has to be somehow control mechanisms. Okay? Para maayos yung kilos ng mga tao. Okay? Hindi po pwede pong um, absolute yung freedom na meron ang tao. Okay, that is um, very important for us to, to understand. Now, the laws of the land provide the most comprehensive rules by which man is expected to abide. And what we have to understand is that the laws of the land are actually very much reflective of the culture of people. The reason why we do not legalize divorce in the Philippines, the reason why we do not legalize abortion in the Philippines when it is already legal in some countries and jurisdictions is because of the influence of our culture. A very conservative culture at that. Okay, so again, the laws of the land provide the most comprehensive rules by which man is expected to abide. Okay, and now we will proceed with our uh, next subtopic, which is the self in the Western and Oriental thought. Now, it is very important for us to emphasize that our understanding of ourselves or our self-construction is actually a form of cultural activity, okay, since culture is very much relative when we say that culture is relative our culture is very much uh, different from the cultures of other people okay now the behavior of the self is very much dependent on its context kung saan ka doon mo isusunod yung 
behavior mo. And that's how you see what is right and what is wrong. Now, this relativism is very much evident in the Western and the Eastern construction of the self. Or if I may rephrase, this is very much evident in the Western and Eastern understanding of the self. Now, dito po sa my next slide, makikita natin, these are specifics of the key differences between individualist and collectivist societies. Now, when we talk about the Western world, these are very much individualist societies. And when we talk about um, the East or the Orient, these are very much collectivist societies. Now, dito sa una, makikita natin, okay, in individualistic societies, everyone grows up to look after him, herself, and his, or him, her immediate family. Yung immediate family lang ang pinaka-importante sa iyo. But, in collectivist societies, say for example, in Filipino societies, people are born into extended families or in other groups. You know, Filipino families are very much extended. Diba? Uh, kasama sa bahay si Tito, si Tita, si Lolo, si Lola, yung mga pamangkin sa bahay, magkakasama. And these are things na hindi maiintindihan sa atin, okay, <coughs> if I may say, ng ibang mga kultura. Okay? Now, another key difference is that this one, okay, in individual societies, children learn to think in terms of the I. Okay? However, in collective society, okay, Children learn to think in terms of the we. Let me explain these people. Okay, so sa isang individualistic societies, kailangan kasi ang gusto nila is self-actualization. So yung sarili nila dapat maging matagumpay. Okay, but in collective societies, it's not only us whom we want to prosper and uh, succeed. Pag gusto mong maging successful, you include your family, di ba? Ginagawa ko to hindi lang para sa akin, kung hindi para sa nanay ko, sa tatay ko, ginagawa ko to para sa mga kapatid ko, sa mga pamangkin ko, sa mga lolo at lola ko, sa mga tiyahin, tiya, mga tiyuhin, mga tiyahin ko, sa mga aso namin, para sa mga kapitbahay namin. So, it is very collectivist, right? In in individual societies, when we say, uh, I, okay, people think in terms of the I, Okay, and in collectivist, kapag sinabi mong I, you think of the we still. Kahit na sabihin mo, ako to, but then again, you have already thought about what would your family say, what would your friend say, what would your uh, pet dog say. So napaka-collectivist, okay? In individual societies also, individual ownership of resources, ang akin ay akin, okay? In collectivist societies, Resources should be shared with relatives. Diba? Yung sahod mo, hindi lang para sa'yo, napupunta sa lahat ng tao sa buhay mo. Okay? Because again, that is a collectivist society. Whether it is a good trademark of being collectivist, um, it is debatable. Okay? And pwede sabihin it is okay and in some aspects, medyo may downside din ito. Okay? In individual societies also, low context communication prevails. Okay, in high con uh, in collective society, high context communication prevails. Okay, kasama na natin dito. Pag sabay na natin to ipaliwanag yung media is the primary source of information sa individuals sa collective social uh, network. Kasi sa mga Western societies, they don't have so much time to socialize with people because they are very much busy working, 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 and working. Believe me, this is true. I lived in South Korea for four years and I've seen how different the world is sa mga first world countries. You, you will say, um, sa, di ba sir, ang Korea is actually part of Asia. But then again, kahit na sabihin mong Asian culture, iba-iba pa rin tayo eh. Okay? Um, Ibang-iba. Okay? Sa West, trabaho. Hindi ka nga, dito sa Pilipinas, sanay na sanay tayo nakikipag-text. Sa kanila, tawag. Pag may kailangan sa'yo, tatawag sila. Hindi sila mag-text. Okay? Because we have so much time because we're not busy because we have no work. Okay? Another one. Okay. Dito po, yung katulad ng sinabi ko sa atin kanina, in individual society, self-actualization is the goal. Okay? I will do everything in my power to be this and to be that. Okay, sa collective societies, okay, the harmony and consensus in societies is the ultimate goal. Say, for example, you want to be a doctor, but then again, your parents would want for you to be an engineer. So even though sa puso mo, gusto mo maging doktor, because you are thinking about harmony and consensus, anong gagawin mo? Sige na nga, mag-i-engineer ako. 
Okay? Para kila mami at kay daddy para hindi na natin pagtalunan ito. Okay? So, yun po yung collective societies. Again, this one, in individual societies, occupation mobility is higher. Okay? Maraming may trabaho. In the, in, in, in the Philippines, in collective societies, including the Philippines, occupation mobility is lower. Bakit? Walang masyadong trabaho. In individual societies, task prevail over relationship. Trabaho muna. In collective societies, relationship prevails over task. Okay? Friendship muna bago yung trabaho. Say for example, sa school, magkaya ang kayo ng tropa ninyo. Okay? Nood muna tayo pagkatapos ng klase, nood tayo ng sine. Di na nood kayo ng sine. Nakaisa kayong pelikula, sabi nyo, ay may time pa tayo, manood tayo. Kahit na kinabukasan, meron kayong exam. Hanggang sa natapos ninyo, hanggang sa nag last full show kayo, nakalimutan nyo nang may exam kayo. Okay, so ano nangyari? You prioritize, we prioritize relationship over our task. And that's very much what descriptive of collective societies in comparison with individual societies na they will beg off when you ask them to, to, to join you. Because again, self-actualization is very much important to them. My goal is to be this and that. Habang sige, mag-party-party ka dyan, magtatrabaho ako because I have a goal in life. Okay. Now, another one is this one. Okay, individual societies. Um, individual interests prevail over collective. Collective interests prevail over individual. Totoo naman po yan. So parang magkakasama na dito yung ating mga sinasabi naman. Per capita GDP tends to be higher. Per capita GDP tends to be lower sa collective societies. Kasi nga, walang masyadong trabaho ang mga... Tao. Now, in case of, of your culture, whether you are in individualist or collectivist, now, our context right now is very much different because, again, when you talk about your influence, you could be an individualist collectivist, okay? You might have some portions of you in you which are very much influenced by the West because of the influences of the movies, the music, whatever, you, books you read and whatnot coming from the West. Tapos, nahaluan yan ng mga influences ng lipunan natin ngayon. Okay? So, that's these are the key differences of individualist and collectivist society. Let me just uh, be uh, very straight with this, okay? In, in individualist societies, when we say, when we think of the I, we think of the In individualist societies, it's, it's self-actualization, ako. Okay? In collectivist societies, when we think of the I, we think of the we. Even though we say I, it's always the we. You have already been influenced by the people around you, your parents and whatnot. Okay? Again, in individualist societies, when we think of the I, we think of the me. In collectivist societies, when we think of the I, we think of the we. In the individualist view, individualistic view of the self. Okay, people are autonomous, they are free, and they are very much focused on achieving their personal goals over the goals of their in-group. However, in uh, the opposite side of it, the uh, collectivist or the interdependent view of the self, it explains that a person sees himself as an integral, isang malaking bahagi ng communal group, be it his nuclear family, his friends, or even his co-workers. Diba minsan? Um, iisipin mo lang kung anong pagkain mo bukas tinatanong mo pa pati yung kapitbahay mo pati yung kaibigan mo <laughs> and what not now in the western societies uh, in western context when a person turns 18 the age that he is perceived to make mature decisions he is given the freedom to live on his own be independent and orchestrate the life that he wants to design uh to design for himself. Okay? So, Western societies yun. Sa, dito sa Pilipinas, hindi pa ganoon. Di ba? Kahit nga ikaw ay college na ayaw kang bitawan ng nanay mo, meron sa atin. Iba, hatid sundo pa rin ng mga magulang habang tayo ay nag-aaral ng senior high school. Patayaw. The question is, do you think living independently at the age of 18 would help you more in your self-discovery and understanding? Okay? Um, let me say this. I think... Noong college ako, because I lived in the dormitory for five years uh, noong college life ko, um, yes, there's a lot of self-discovery kapag ikaw ay nabuhay ng mag-isa na lang, okay, uh, at that age. Because you'll be doing everything by yourself, okay? Kahit may sakit ka, ikaw ang nag-aalaga sa sarili mo. And you'll be able to understand yourself better, 
Okay? But will you be ready? Say, for example, if your parents would tell you, anak, lumabas ka na ng bahay, pwede ka nang mabuhay mag-isa. If you have experience living in the dormitory, there are things that you would uh, think na sana nasa bahay na lang ako, lalo na kapag may sakit ka or masama ang pakiramdam mo. Di ba? Mas gusto mo yung alaga ng, ng magulang. Okay, you talk about um, our culture. And um, as we continue with our discussion, let me just um, give you a quick cultural trip. Um, culture is very much important to me. As I said a while ago, I lived in Korea for four years. I finished my master's degree in Seoul in Korea, George Trinity Graduate University. And that was my first time to, to go abroad, to leave the, the Philippines for four years. And I it was actually a leap of faith on my part because I didn't actually know what I was supposed to expect at that time, okay? But I did, and uh, I'm glad I did, okay? And because of that, na, mas na, I, I became very much more interested to travel the world. And let me just give you a quick cultural trip of the uh, places where I've been through, where I was able to understand cultures of people better, and with that, I was able to understand people better. I became more understanding, okay? Kasi hindi ka pwedeng mabuhay nang ipinipilit mo kung ano yung gusto mo sa kanila because again when you are in Rome as as the saying goes when you are in Rome live as the Romans do hindi mo pwedeng sabing hindi hindi ganito kasi ganito ang sa amin di ba because you're not in in, in your you're not in your world okay let me just give you a quick cultural trip okay so this was a uh, picture was when i uh, visited the, uh, Australia the first time this was in Sydney so if you can see the uh, background picture pangarap ko po yan Okay, yung sa may Sydney Opera House. So these are, again, yung mga pictures na ito, these are snapshots. Mga kuha ko po ito while we were having our, uh, tawag dito, tour sa may Sydney. My, my, I have three sisters who are living and are married, okay, in Australia. Ang nanay ko po ay doon na rin nakatira, okay, sa kasalukuyan. And then, uh, this picture. So you'll see, I have, uh, in four separate days, I have, Different pictures also with the uh, Sydney Opera House and uh, on the background. Okay, so these are some a glimpse of my travel. Okay, sa my uh, ito po ay sa my Sydney. Okay, uh, this is in Bondi Beach. Ito po nakikita ninyo, the very popular beach in Sydney. But wala po ito in comparison dun sa Boracay na meron tayo mas maganda. And this is a picture in Gold Coast. These are my sisters my brother-in-law and then my niece uh this is in brisbane okay ito po ay sa brisbane din uh, uh is it i uh, know this is in sydney so madame tuzard hard rock cafe in sydney and this is in um brisbane okay nanood kami ng uh, aladdin okay ito po yung aking pamangking uh Half breed, <laughs> I mean Filipino Kiwi. Okay, so na nagbuo kami ng Aladdin the Musical nito. This was my first day in um, Sydney. And then, of course, pag nasa Sydney ka, kailangan makakita ka ng kangaroo. Okay, hindi po ito sa bahay ng kapatid ko. Kung hindi bahay po ito ng kapit bahay nila. My sister told me that yung kapit bahay nila ay nagaalaga ng kangaroo. So I asked if I can. Okay, so yan po yung kangaroo na yan. Okay, si Jojo. But ang sad, bad news po is, I think a year ago, Jojo uh, passed away. Okay, namatay po siya. Okay, and of course, uh, syempre hindi ko kakalimutan ng Korea where I lived for four years. Nung panahong ako po ay gay popper pa. Okay, this was the heavy snowfall in, in Seoul at that time. Now, this is just a glimpse of my life in Seoul. Okay, this was the team I was with when we visited um Indonesia. Okay, so syempre kailangan nasa Korea ka, mag-try kang mag-suot ng kanilang handbook. Okay, this was my last day in Seoul actually before I left home. Uh, and then, this was the group, uh, the Filipino uh, organization. Okay, Filipino Scholars sa Korea Incorporated. Okay, I am a member of this until now. So these are the Filipino student organization in Seoul, Korea. Okay, kapag nagmi-meeting kami doon, doon po kami sa may embassy ng South Korea. So, pangapanahon kay Popper pa po ako yun. And of course, these are some of pictures of my school. This is this was my former roommate. Okay, si... 
<laughs> oh my God. Bakit nakakalimutan ko na pangalan nito? Okay. So these are my classmates. So galing kami sa iba-ibang bansa. Okay. Narbusher pa. That's the only story. I'm sorry. Okay. And then, uh, this was uh, in Japan where when we visited Japan. Okay. Ito po yung modern house na ng mga Japanese ngayon. Okay, so these are just a glimpse of what uh, my travel in Japan. Nag-homestay po kami doon sa mga uh, Japanese families. Okay, dalawang bahay yung tinirahan namin doon. Hiwahiwalay kami ng mga grupo namin. And then this is in Indonesia. Okay, so a different world naman. Sa Batam Island sa Indonesia, which is like 30 minutes ferry ride from Singapore. So if ever you'll be traveling to Singapore, pwede pa yung pumunta dyan. Mura. Okay, so a uh, different world. Okay, ibang-iba. Ito mga batang po ito ay nagsasagwan papunta at pabalik ng uh, kanilang bahay para makalang makapasok sa eskwelahan. And last year, ayan, nakikita niyo na po. Last year, I was able to visit Korea again. Okay, so ayan po yung aming mga karawan. Kasama ko po yung uh, aking mga kaibigan, mga professors din sa Korea. Sa Korea, sorry po, sa MCL. At sinama ko po yung aking pamangkin dahil siya isang K-pop. Okay, pangarap niyo dyan. So, we went there uh, winter time pa. Okay, so makikita ninyo yung aming mga larawan dito. This is uh, in front of the Kyungbukgung Palace. Okay, so you see here, ayan po yung mga larawan namin. So, if you will be recognizing some of our professors here. Ayan, si Ma'am Myla, si Ma'am Jonabel, si Sir Bart, si Ma'am Myla. Ako, ito po yung aming pamangkin, aking pamangkin. Not a world boy. And then dahil army ang aking pamangkin, nagpunta kami doon sa parang walk of fame nila at niyakap niya si BTS. And of course, I came back to my school. Ito po yung aking eskwelahan. Okay, I returned there and got some documents na importante. Then we visited also the War Memorial of Korea kung saan meron tayong flag dito because during the Korean War, ang Pilipinas ay isa sa mga tumulong sa kanilang bansa. And also, we visited the Sun Kyung Kwan University, okay, where my friend, si Q, okay, he was my friend uh, doon. Uh, tinuring niya kami. This is where he graduated. At kaya po may 1,000 won dito kasi itong background na bahay na ito, ito po yan. Okay, kaya dyan kami nagpa-picture. Tapos binigyan niya kami tigo 1,000. That's only around 38 pesos anyway. Okay, and then, this is the Bokchon uh, village, yung pinaka, yung oldest uh, neighborhood sa Korea. Kaya makikita niyo yung lugar dito, eh, medyo old style yung kaling mga lugar. And then, of course, saan ka pupunta? Siyempre, hindi ka pwedeng uh, hindi makapunta dito. Okay, uh, dyan naman. Hindi ba puro BTS ang kailan ng pamangkin Okay, Night Market, Dongdaemun. And of course, we went to the buffer zone. Okay, uh, between North and South Korea. I think this is the highlight of our t uh, of our uh, stay there in Korea. So we went to the demilitarized zone, the buffer zone between the North and South Korea. Okay, nakakamiss mag-travel, ano? Lalo na ngayong mga panahon na ito dahil hindi tayo makalabas. So much about myself, okay, I just gave you a quick tour para kahit pa paano makahinga tayo sa ating lecture. At pasok tayo sa pinakahuling part ng ating discussion, the self as a product of the modern world. Now, a significant part of what should be understood about culture is that it is very much dynamic. Katulad nga po ng sinabi natin kanina. And since the self has to keep up with the ever-changing world, we need to adjust, okay? Readjust and we have to realign our actions with the transformation and the evolution of the society. Now also, the values of our society changes over time. And if in case they do not, the society will be trapped in the challenges of the modern world. That's why when we talk about the self as a social construct, the self then becomes a product of the modern society among other constructions. Okay. The question here is, how did the internet make the people of the world 
closer yet far from each other. Now, we have to understand that the internet paved the way for globalization. And with that, we are able to have a world without borders, okay? Kaya ho, we are influenced so much, a lot by a lot of cultures, just the same. Is it an advantage or a disadvantage? Um, <clears throat> I would say there are uh, pros and cons, okay, of, of the internet age. Okay, marami po yan. And sa atin, individually, iba-iba yung naging epekto po ng lahat ng mga ito. But then again, since the self has to keep up with the ever-changing world, we need to adjust. Okay, doon sa mga nangyayaring pagbabago sa lipunan po natin. Now, the diversity and variations of these technologies in particular forced us to confront the vast array of our cultural traditions, challenging our own belief system and values, which expose the strength and weaknesses of our own worldviews. Okay, now the effect of culture, okay, in today's younger generation must be highlighted since your generation, which I tagged at least in this book I called you as the selfie generation, is not considered as a passive user of culture. In fact, Diba? Since the advent of social media, maraming mga tao ngayon ang nagiging content creator, nagiging culture creator who practically live your lives and present yourselves in the virtual world. Okay, so kung makikita ko um, natin dito. Okay, so you will see here that we are now considered as culture creators, 80% of your um, generation. The question here is, because of the incessant use of social media of your generation, do you actually believe that your social media account exactly represents who you are? Okay, because there's a study that says that 80, around 80 or 90% of what we see in social media is not real. Okay, uh, some of it I agree. Okay, ang, ang social media kasi, if I may say, um, it has made us very jealous of the people around us, right? Kaya pati pagkain, saan ka pumunta, anong ginawa mo, pinopost mo, and when other people look at it, parang may, may sense of parang, ay, bakit siya ganun, sana ako din. It's not a matter of nagagalit sila uh, because of your successes or whatnot. It has made us compare our lives to each other, okay? Um... I don't know about you, but even the use of social media account, I don't know how many social media accounts you have. I only have um, Instagram and um, Facebook. Yun lang, before I have Twitter. So makita nyo ako sa Twitter, parang sampung taon na pong hindi gumagana yun. Okay? So again, you are culture creators, but then again, you have to be very responsible in the use of social media. Okay, because again, that will be very reflective of the kind of person that you are whenever you, again, um, you have your freedom, but then again, there is no such thing as absolute freedom. You have to be very responsible as well of what you share in your social media account, and you have to be very careful also of what you share in your social media account because whatever you post can be used against you. Okay. Pwede kang pagpiestahan ng mga tao doon to their heart's content. So you better be ready for whatever uh, repercussions, okay, uh, yung mangyari as, as we post. And as we proceed with yung pinakalas na lang po na lecture natin dito, let's talk about the self as reflected in the collectivist teachings of Confucius, okay? Now, the teachings of Confucianism are the very fabric of social relationships in China, reflecting collectivism at its core. Okay, because again, you know, China has been very strict in its very in its implementation of its rules about social relationships. If you are watching K dramas, particularly yung mga K drama na mga historical, perhaps makikita ninyo na lagi nilang nababanggit si Confucius yung uh, filial piety and whatnot. Because um, East Asian uh, East Asian countries, when I say East Asia, I'm referring to countries like South Korea, China. Taiwan, um, Mongolia, um, Japan, these are very much Confucianistic in, in, in their ideals. So they are very much influenced by um, Confucius. Okay. Now, the influence of Confucius, is, uh, the teachings of Confucius and philosophies have been infused particularly in 
again, in East Asian countries like Japan, South Korea, and with those who follow the teachings of Confucius. Okay, now, um, we have to understand that the teachings of Confucius, again, are the very fabric of social relationships in China because at the heart of Confucianism is a system of social and ethical philosophy rather than a religion. Um, if I may just say, you know, Confucianism was never a religion before. Okay, it was only those who championed the cause of Confucius who made it into a religion. But it's more of a philosophy. In fact, it is a social philosophy. That's the reason why um, the teachings of Confucius is being studied by um, philosophers as well. Okay, so you will see on screen, on screen right now the five cardinal relationships in Confucianism. So you have the the ruler, okay, ruling the subject, okay. So the the subject here, ang ang pinag-uusapan natin dito, the self in the uh, teachings of Confucius entails the participation of the other members of the society. Parang hindi ka mabubuhay ng ikaw lang. This is because the symbiosis of selfhood and otherness is the Confucian concept of the self. It's all about living symbiotically with the people around you. Okay? And it is the dynamic process, the, the main goal of which is the spiritual development. Perhaps that's the reason why it somehow transformed into being a religion. Confucianism is a social philosophy. It delineates, it outlines the core of human relationships and the end goal of which is spiritual growth. Now, according to Confucius, as we ritualize and perfect human relationship, Okay, kapag ang subject ay nagpapasakop sa ruler, kapag ang son ay nagpapasakop sa tatay, kapag ang wife ay nagpapasakop sa husband, okay, when a younger brother to submits to elder brother, okay, that is when we ritualize and perfect human relationships. That's the reason why filial piety is very important, is a very important concept in, in Confucianism and even in Confucianistic societies, okay? Pero kapag pinag-usapan natin ang friend-friend, sila ay ano, pantay lamang po, okay, sa pagtingin ng Confucianism. And so as we... um wrap up our discussion on the self as a social construct. Now, we have to understand, um, to summarize, that the self as a social construct or as a, as a product of society integrates man as a member of the society and also as a product of the society. We created culture, but just the same, we became products of the culture that we created. Okay, thus, the self is embedded in the culture which we created and we are able to generate, to alter, and restore this culture for our own purpose. The social behavior of the self is, at least from the anthropological and sociological disciplines, it's very much influenced by our cultural background, whether the individual is coming from an individualistic or a collectivist society. Thus. Culture is an indispensable part of the self. And as we wrap up, I will be going back to what Clifford Geert said, okay, during the first part of our discussion when he said, culture is not just an ornament of human existence. It is the principal basis of its specificity and essential condition for understanding the self. And that wraps up our discussion on the self as a social construct. I know that this has been uh, quite long, okay? So you don't really have to listen to this in one sitting to watch the video in one sitting. Pwede niyo pong i-divide ito uh, at your own face. Okay, but this is the entirety of our discussion on the self as a social construct. Thank you for joining me in our lecture today. Again, um, this is still S031, Understanding the Self. And this is Suri. Thank you again for joining me. This is Suri again now, signing off.